Hey everyone, welcome to my talk, Pandemic in Plain Text. My name is Troy, aka Waveguide on Twitter. Uh, I'm an RF engineer in the aerospace industry. I was formerly a security engineer in the access control and lock industry for a number of years. Uh, I also host a channel over at hackerwarehouse.tv. And I just wanted to give a special thanks to IoT Village and to DEF CON Safe Mode for hosting this talk uh, and to my friend Voxel for this really cool setup and background. So let's get started, pandemic in plain text. All right, the purpose of this talk, and I wanna be really clear, is to stop the use of insecure communications in hospitals by shining light on the use of insecure wireless communications that are accidentally leaking your health data and violating your privacy laws. Um, I'm not here to bash hospitals. I'm not here to bash the medical industry. I just want to bring to light that there is this leak happening and it's been happening for 20 years. And uh, right now in the middle of this pandemic, I think it's really important uh, that we pay attention to this and that we fix this problem. And uh, just to note that none of your healthcare prov providers are really doing this intentionally. Um, this appears to be accidentally that they're leaking your information and they just don't know it. And if you don't want to watch the rest of this talk, the TLDR is, hey, your COVID test results are being literally broadcast from mountains. Yeah, so the story behind this is uh, if you go back to November or December, um, a lot of us were looking at Twitter and watching this pandemic come across China. And uh, we were really asking ourselves these questions like, is this real? Is this going to come over here? Um, then it kind of came across the ocean and we got to ask these questions about, you know, do we have enough beds and PPE and, and any cries for help and are there going to be shortages? And um, I just started having all these questions and I really was looking for data on this stuff. And like most of the people, it's kind of hard to sift through um, all the incoming data that we get through the news. And I just really wanted the hard data. And you know, I wanted to know, is it affecting my community? And um, if if I could see the data, um, then I would be able to answer these questions. And I remembered that I think I knew an answer to these questions uh, using RF and wireless. And that was through uh, something called PogSag, which is pagers. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, we did a talk on Hacker Warehouse TV. Not really a talk, but we did a show about how to um, decode pager messages that are freely being broadcast in the air. And when we did that, we saw a lot of things um, that were medical related. And I thought, well, maybe it's a good time to revisit that and see what we can find and see if any of these questions could be answered with data um, over the POXAG network. All right, well, just a little legal disclaimer for this talk. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but I think the following is true. Uh, possessing a software-defined radio. Uh, yeah, that's totally legal. Ham radio uh, operators do that across the globe. Receiving 900 megahertz signals on those SDRs. Um, yeah, of course, that's legal. Uh, listening to audio on those signals, just like voice or tones. Yep, nothing special there. Decoding the audio of those signals. Uh, well, that depends. Um, are they encrypted? Um, in this particular case for this talk, no, not even a little bit. This is all plain text tones, and we're just decoding them. Um, that is legal. Decrypting secure messages or anything that's encrypted, um, that is not legal. And in this particular case, nothing was decrypted. Um, distributing or sharing patient information, obviously that is not legal. Don't distribute any personal information or any sensitive information that you may receive over these plain text broadcasts. But um, for the hospitals that are broadcasting the patient information from a mountaintop antenna, um, apparently that's perfectly legal. I don't know. Maybe that's just a HIPAA violation. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, let's continue. All right, is this a new vulnerability? Um, the answer, unfortunately, is no. Um, I'm not, unfortunately, dropping zero days here. This has been around for quite some time. Uh, I think it was DEF CON 5 this was brought up. Uh, back in 2016, there was also the Holy Pager uh, artwork, I believe it was in Chicago, where it would intercept all PogSag pager messages, and it would forward them randomly to one of three pagers on display, and then it would print out a continuous roll of receipt paper uh, making a big pile of personal information that they automatically redacted. So that was pretty cool. 
Then back in 2018, um, this was brought up again. It was kind of localized to five or six hospitals. Uh, did some digging into that case, and it seemed that the response was that intercepting or decoding these tones was a sophisticated attack. And I think you'll see at the end of this talk that that is not the case at all. All right, where to begin? Um, in order to do this, you have to get some gear. And back in 1997, I would have agreed that it's a sophisticated attack, uh, but not today. Uh, back then, you'd have to get a scanner. Uh, you'd have to modify it with something from Loft Heavy Industries, like this Pogsag decoder from back in the day. I think that thing was 60 bucks. Then you would go over to this Doctor Who's radio phone site, which I used to frequent quite often when I was a teenager. And... Um, then you would have to stuff all that back into the scanner, and then you could decode these tones. And so, yes, back in 1997, that was a sophisticated attack. However, in 2020, um, you just have to buy a $20 SDR, and you can get those from Hacker Warehouse. You can get them off Amazon, off eBay. It's really just too easy now. Um, you really just plug in the SDR, download some software, and then you tune to the signal. Um, it's almost as easy as getting in your car and tuning in a frequency on your radio. Um, you pick one of these frequencies here. These have been around for 20 years. Uh, the pager networks really haven't changed. Um, and you tune into them and you're gonna hear some tones. Now the frequency used for this talk was 929.596. Um, I localized the signal. It's coming from Santiago Peak, the antenna farm up there, and it has a lot of coverage. I was picking up hospitals from about a 70 mile uh, radius. So uh, a lot of stuff from Riverside, Pomona, uh, down San Diego area, Irvine, not so much from LA County, but everything you see there in the um, circle was definitely within range of this tower. And the way the towers work is they relay off of one another. So a lot of times, if you're not close to this tower, uh, you'll be close to another tower, and and you can find a signal that way. These these signals are very strong. They're probably when you when you plug in the software and you tune to a station, they are the strongest stations around. Okay, so as far as the signal goes, um, it sounds a little something like this. Now, this was provided by M. Out of Zor. Um, they said they got it from Matt Damon. I'm not sure if that's true. But it sounds like kind of like an old uh, modem tone, right? Um, so that's what you're listening for. So when you tune to that 929 frequency, you're going to hear a whole lot of that. Okay, so the audio tone you just heard um, basically is a little more advanced than like a DTF, DTMF tones on a keypad. So like whenever you press one on your telephone you get a combination of this 1209 hertz and this 697 hertz and, and that's how the system knows that's a one um, similarly uh, frequency shift keying whenever you lock onto that 929 megahertz signal um, those audio shifts you hear are creating ones and zeros in the bitstream um, and that's kind of in a nutshell how fsk works um, remember i'm watering this down for kind of all audiences but that the point is the tones will create the frequency shift keying, which then creates data. And a Windows program like PDW will decode that data, and it'll just put it across your screen like this. And so this is actually what you just heard decoded. It's the, it's the, handard, the standard DEF CON, drink all the booze, hack all the things mantra. So that's how this works. Um, it's really not encrypted. It's all plain text. It's just a little bit more advanced than DTMF tones on a telephone. And uh, you tune into the tones and you get the data on your screen. It's really that simple. So now that you know how it works and uh, how to decode a dual core song, let's shift back to um, kind of the hospital research. So I did a little digging here. There was this uh, research about use of technology for patient care related communications. Um, the gist of that paper was that 80% of hospitals still use pagers 
And in that paper, um, they actually believe that pagers are more secure than cell phones. And uh, you can check out this link and, and read more about that. But the quote that stood out to me was this one. They send only numeric messages or basic text messages, says Dr. So-and-so. This way, no confidential information can get in the wrong hands. As could happen with a cell phone. And I think that is the heart of this problem. Um, pagers are actually thought of as a very good tool and a secure tool to use in hospitals um, when in fact they're not. So um, if we kind of know that, then it kind of makes sense why all a HIPAA compliance is being put into the network and securing the network within the hospital and the pager usage is not really thought of um, as an open door. It's thought of more secure than that network. And um, what I found was that the pager usage actually isn't. So if we go back to that quote of they send only numeric messages, basic text messages, and no confidential information can get in the wrong hands, um, it's actually quite different. So here we go. This is a basic pager message from a hospital. It's leaking your personal information and it even includes COVID results. Um, this is one dissected, so I'll walk through this. You have the pager number, followed by the message time it was sent, the message date, uh, Flex A, which is a type of POGSAC related protocol, um, Alpha, which kind of defines the type of Flex. There's different types. It includes this automated system name, which I'll touch on in a bit. Um, it has the hospital name. It then goes into a requested, which this is a bed request. Um, last name, first name, age, gender, isolation protocol. That kind of tells a PPE. There's droplet, which is like a face mask. Sometimes it says full PPE. Sometimes it says face, um, different things there. The origin unit, um, sometimes it says doctor's name, sometimes it says a unit. In this case, it was the emergency department, or usually that's emergency something. Um, sometimes it's a full doctor's name. And then in the comments right there, it says COVID positive and or COVID negative. Um, so that is a basic pager message that is not supposed to have any of your personal information in it. Um, because of COVID, they have gotten quite bloated with personal information. It didn't used to be this big. And that is the point of this discussion, is this is what a simple text message looks like now. And um, it has too much personal information in it. And it has a lot of privacy violations in it as well. So um, once I saw that, I mean, what did I do? I decided just to let that decoder run. So I ran it for 52 days mid-March through August 1st, 2020. Um, looking at COVID-related results, they would come across the screen. It resulted in 52 files, um, only 28 megabytes um, worth of data. Um, and remember what I was looking for in the beginning? Um, I was trying to figure out, hey, is this pandemic real? I didn't know anybody that had it. I didn't know if it was in our hospitals. So I really just wanted to trust the data and see for myself. Um, was really concerned about this whole, do we have enough beds, PPE, and shortages? Uh, wondered if there was data that would support that or give me a number. Um, I wanted to know if it's affecting my community. And I wanted to know, <clears throat> is anybody out there doing this right and sending these messages securely? And so I got answers to all of these, really. Um, this is what a basic pager text message looks like and here's some of the information we got so hospital bed requests um, they include COVID results you can see over here COVID positive COVID positive um, they came from a couple different systems this one came from an XT system uh, this one over here is this RTM system um, at now um, so you can see here I have redacted um, all the information so I'm not distributing personal information here um, this is a generic Patricia She's 84 year old female. She has COVID positive. And this one is a 45 year old male, Lazaro. Um, he has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, additional comments they even put in here. Um, this is what is known, uh, COVID is known as, is acute hypoxic respiratory failure. Um, you see this pretty readily come across the stream. 
Um, you see EMS fire runs, which uh, give you a little more data on um, things that are happening then and now um, outside the hospital. Um, this particular instance, uh, someone was brought in because they smoked weed and drank some shots, but they asked them about COVID and they were negative on the COVID questions. So that comes across the stream. You get a lot of nurse to doctor communications going on over the pages. Um, you got ICU admissions. Um, you, you can find out details there. They're broadcasting. This person was intubated on three pressers. Um, they even questions on... They want to discuss options with hydroxychloroquine and ribavirin. Um, and then they have phone numbers there, right? They're, they're, there's a lot of questions going back and forth. So, and you also see these nurse to doctor communications regarding ventilator data. So basically everything they talk about on the news is being broadcast through these pager messages in plain text. There's a lot of this coming across the stream. Uh, over 52 days, there were 17,286 tones decoded that turned into these types of text messages. Um, of those, uh, 1,852 were bed requests um, with that HIPAA information included that should not have been there. Uh, there were 2,077 diagnoses. Um, of those diagnoses, uh, 1,219 were COVID related. Uh, that includes negatives and positives or even questions, uh, COVID questions. Uh, I just put these on here for comparison. There were only 78 fracture related, uh, surprisingly only 67 cancer related, um, and 300 chest pain. So you see an up, uptick in chest pains uh, with COVID. And so that was one of the filters also in the data. Average age of patients uh, with the virus uh, was about 72 within that tower. Uh, but like I said, there's towers across the United States everywhere that are broadcasting this. So. It will vary from um, place to place. Um, also, I did get an answer to that final question. Is anyone doing it secure? And I found that a few, I think it was 11% of the messages actually were sent securely. Um, obviously, there's a lot of attack vectors with this kind of information um, from embarrassment, to identity theft, to billing scams, disrupting supply chains, misrouting patients. That would be if you were spoofing communications. We are not doing that here. We're just receiving these things uh, out of the thin air. Uh, but there's a lot of like drug interaction text messages where it says, hey, should they take this, text me yes or no. And that seems dangerous, especially over unencrypted communications, which leads just to life safety in general. And that's why this practice of using pagers in hospitals just really needs to stop. So how does this happen? Um, it, it appears that no one's doing this intentionally as part of a system. Um, that XT system, um, is there's a lot of these different patient management systems that hospitals use. This one looked like it came from Teletracking XT, which they talk about IVRs, which are um, systems that help hospitals manage patients. And even in here, um, in the Teletracking website, they talk about, you know, details are sent to the employee's pager. Um, keep in mind, that's not their fault. This is just their software. You can implement these pager um, communication systems properly with encryption like we saw back here. Um, see, this one was secure. But um, it, it's really up to the hospital and their service providers. It may not even be the hospital's fault. They may contract it out to a telecommunication service provider and they're just using the wrong type of pager network rather than the secure one. So also found though that um, these systems are tracking this exact same data and they're providing it back to the hospital um, kind of on an enterprise level. So um, that the heart of the data is the pager data and then you can create these dashboards and so they're actually doing what I was trying to do but they're doing it uh, within the hospital and you can see it's very valuable information for the hospitals um, but it just needs to be it needs to stay within the hospital right uh, so what answers did I get um, yes this is real it's happening I saw EMS run confirmations the symptoms match um, I, we can see most bed requests um, seem like bed levels were okay. Didn't see a lot of messages where, where, where people were um, worried about that, but that was just my area. I'm sure that's a problem other places. Uh, I was able to see in my community that the older population was more affected. And I also was able to answer the question of, is there a lot of security here? And it was not. Only 11% of the messages um, were actually secured and encrypted. And in no way did I try to decrypt them at all. Um, that would have just been too hard when you have thousands of thousands of them that are not encrypted. 
Um, so where do we go from here? Healthcare providers need to do this stuff. And I've been um, in the industry, so these are the questions that um, some of these roles need to ask. I won't go through all these, but CIO you needs to allocate budget. IT needs to ask some questions. Um, auditors, start auditing these pager networks, please. Um, lawyers, start asking questions. Uh, reporters, spread this information in this talk so we can have these conversations about healthcare system. And uh, patients, you can ask your providers about their pager system security if you see your doctor uh, wearing one. Um, hospitals just need to listen to the security community. Uh, please don't say that this is a sophisticated attack because it's not at all. It's super easy. Uh, we just need to upgrade the security in these systems. And for the healthcare providers, they just need to uh, keep up the good fight. Let IT deal with this and um, keep doing what you're doing because we're all uh, thankful for everything that you do. All right. Thank you. I think my time is up. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. If you uh, want to hit me up on Twitter, you can reach me at WaveGuide. That's at W-A-V-E-G-U-Y-D. And, or on the Discord link right here. Uh, I'll be doing Q&A right now. So talk to you soon and hopefully see you next year. Thanks.